This is the Razer Blade 15 Advanced, a laptop I've been using as my personal workhorse and portable gaming powerhouse for the last few weeks. It's ploughed through hours of 4K footage at Computex, written thousands of scripted words, and allowed for hours of gaming entertainment. And using it for so long has really allowed me to give you a thorough verdict on this machine, as there's definitely things I really love about it, but there are also a couple of things that do hold it back slightly. But make no mistake, if you're after a performance computer that can meet all of your gaming, video editing, pretty much any high intensity workflow needs, then this, the Razer Blade 15 Advanced, is my favourite laptop in this class and easily the one I would recommend. It all starts with Razer's aesthetics, which screams quality from head to toe. There's absolutely nothing cheap about the 2.1kg chassis, whether you're running your fingers across the classy black shell, gazing at the wafer-thin bezels, or using the magical precision touchpad on the 144Hz display. I'm telling you, the first time you boot up this machine you're going to be amazed. A laptop like this is all about balance, and it really shows. It's not about doing one thing very well at the cost of everything else, it's about doing everything and juggling all of that with minimal compromise. That means that it's got to be good for general use, great for gaming, and ideal for productivity, all while being portable and having great battery life. And many of these things will depend on the exact configuration that you go for, but performance across the range will put some serious power under your hood. My spec includes an RTX 2070 Max-Q GPU with an Intel 6-core processor, bolstered by 16GB of RAM and a high refresh rate screen. It's quite frustrating that the CPU is tied to the screen choice, as the new 240Hz display isn't something that everyone is going to be able to utilise, and I'd probably want to save some cash on the 144Hz option, but then that would leave me with the previous generation of Intel processor. But then again, it is quite cool that you do have the choice between a high refresh rate screen or a 4K OLED panel that's going to be fantastic if you want to do productivity or you're relying on colour critical applications. I myself would probably go for the 144Hz option as I'd mainly use this for gaming, but if you are working with photography apps or something like that and then playing games second, then obviously that's the way you're going to want to go. Let's talk about gaming though. And the thing that I really love the most about the blade is just how inoffensive it is while doing it. The whole frame is not overly big, and it's only really the Razer logo and RGB keyboard that actually say gaming, and they whisper it, rather than screaming. Now in the blade's default balanced profile, GPU and CPU performance are limited slightly, which gives you a better level of acoustics for a more, well, balanced experience. It's a good move for general use, or if you're gaming without headphones, but you're really going to want to enable the dedicated gaming mode to really unlock this laptop's full potential. And it's here that we see Battlefield 5 fully playable ultra settings, and even able to take advantage of that extra refresh rate panel. Having said this, I would recommend in real world use reducing the settings down to high, as it did yield the right balance between visuals and smoothness, and thus is something I'd recommend. But regardless of the game you play, you can't help but be impressed by the 2070 Max-Q, as it really is the sweet spot for performance gaming at 1080p, with only RTX titles showing resistance to 60fps gaming. And this is a bit of a sour spot I guess for me, as obviously RTX is the future, it's all about DLSS, it's all about ray tracing, but on the desktop side of things, I don't really use any of these things, as in other than maybe Metro, I don't think that the performance difference actually sort of justifies the extra bit of quality. And on the laptop, I'm afraid the news is very similar, if not worse, because there's less performance to actually spare in the first place, and playing at 1080p, DLSS just looks a little bit blurry to be honest. Like the difference between it on with ray tracing and everything completely off, it looks better with natural 1080p everything off than RTX and DLSS. So if you're buying this laptop for its dedicated RTX features, at the time of filming I really don't think it's worth doing this, but if you're buying it because it's a great laptop for gaming, then obviously this is less of a concern and you can pick and choose the features that I guess make a difference to you. As a dedicated fun machine then, this thing is awesome, but again, the thing that makes the Blade so special is that it can do so many other things without that gaming tax that you'd usually have to deal with on most of these decked out GPU spec machines. The Blade fit in my normal size laptop bag without any hassle at all. 
my trip to Computex saw the laptop crunch through 4K MPEG video without any problems. And while Resolve 16 wasn't the quickest I've ever seen to render the footage, it impressed me with just how well it coped. I will say that the balanced mode shouldn't be used for editing, as it did reduce the CPU clock speeds to a sustained 2.6 GHz down from 3.2 in gaming mode. But either way, you can rely on this as a video editor. There's also Windows Hello support, which I thought works quite well at first, but seems to forget what I look like, and you end up trying to log in and then not really work. That happens a lot. But do be aware that if you push this thing hard, it is going to fight back, and you will see high temperatures and higher noise levels. I tested the blade in quite a traditional desk environment, and I was hitting about 86 degrees on the CPU and 76 on the GPU in Battlefield 5. But cranking up the gaming mode and playing City Skylines in bed, I actually was approaching 100 degrees on the CPU and 82 on the GPU, with the whole laptop getting very, very hot. The lesson here is don't cover up the vents, be a little bit more sensible about it than I was, but again, the point with this is that you might run into a few thermal limitations in really hot or extreme scenarios, so do be aware of this and things might get a little bit loud, might get a little bit throttling. It's on the limit. Turning to the port selection, the main things that are clearly missing here are an SD card reader and a full-size Ethernet jack, which I guess come with a smaller size, but it's still very frustrating. And while you can get around this with an adapter, it sadly doesn't come provided, which I think is a real missed opportunity. But I guess on a positive note, it's nice that we do have Thunderbolt 3 to make all of this possible. And the reversible power connection is a nice touch as well. So while the IO definitely is a bit of a weaker side, there really is so much to love here with the blade. A great screen, a highly responsive feel, and a customizable performance that can meet anyone's needs. So what's the catch? And you're probably expecting me to say the price, and make no mistake, this is a very expensive laptop, and it's not something that sadly all of us are going to be able to afford, and it's not something I think all of us will ever want to justify. It's over £2,000 for the model I've got here, that is very pricey. But I think when you compare that to something like an Apple MacBook, or just anything else that is similar in terms of specs, feel, and size, it's fairly reasonable, dare I say it. It's not completely crazy, and I don't think that should hold you back if you are looking at something like this um, in terms of actually picking up the blade. The problem that I really had with this though, and the thing that I would say I honestly hated, and I mean hated about the laptop when I started using it, is the keyboard. And this is obviously quite a big deal for a laptop, it's all you're pretty much going to be using, whether you're playing games or doing any sort of work. Keyboard, it's important, right? But the layout and the fact that the keys are so shallow does mean that it takes quite a long time to get used to. And honestly, the first sort of couple of days that I was using this, I was writing up notes, I was doing emails, I was making so many mistakes, all my screen was just filled with that red squiggly line. It was not a very pleasant experience, and I think the thing is, I didn't see myself getting past this. I thought that I would never be able to get used to this, I thought it was just a bad keyboard. But I will eat my own words, because having used this for around about three weeks now, I would say that I have got used to it, and I will also say that I've begun to like it a little bit. It's definitely not my favourite, I like keys that have a bit more of traction, a bit more, what's the, the traction, is not the right word, a bit more depth to them, they go down more, that's what I'm trying to say. Something like the Surface Book 2, I would say that's my favourite keyboard out there for typing any sort of words, emails, scripts, all of that stuff. So while this still isn't the best of the best, and some people really won't like it, I would say just give it a bit of time to get used to before making your final decision, because I was in that situation, I hated it, and it's only now that I've almost begun to like it. The final things to mention are the battery life, storage, and speakers, as I'd describe all of these as pretty much middle of the road. The storage is insanely fast, but there's not that much of it. The speakers can sound very, very good in games, but they make video sound a little bit odd. And as for the battery life, well, it's pretty good for a gaming laptop, but not great for a productivity machine. So as something that is going to be doing both, I think you'll probably have mixed opinions about it. I got about an hour and a half playing City Skylines, and nearer to four to five hours for general use. This works great for my workflow, but it might not fit into yours. And I guess to summarize, everyone is different, right? I play a lot of games, but I primarily do a lot of emails, scripts, and then some 4K video editing. So I need a machine that does everything. And what do I prioritize? What is more important to me? 
it's going to be so different for everyone that building the perfect laptop is pretty much impossible. And there are definitely problems with the blades, but ultimately I really have to congratulate and commend Razer on what they've produced here, as while it is very expensive, it is the best balance that I've ever come across for a laptop. And I do have to send this back, unfortunately, and video loan this one out, which is a shame. But honestly, if I was going to buy a laptop to do everything for my personal use, I would buy a blade. I'm really confident in saying that because, again, while it's not perfect, it pretty much hits most of the nails on the head. And I would absolutely love to keep carrying this, I guess, in my bag despite the weight. Do get subscribed for more videos just like this and obviously let me know what you think of the Razer Blade. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.